It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's it alive. is alive. It is alive. Hi, Jim. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Very good. Good to have Thank you in you, the Charlotte. studio here. And uh, thanks to ACMI uh, in Arlington, Massachusetts, for hosting us in their elaborate studio here. I'd like to go through a little bit of uh, our introduction. Uh, this is Ready Row USA. It's our 123rd episode. And uh, we're in our fourth, or what is it, our third year, fourth year? Third year. We're in our third year, and we're going in, yeah, we're going to have our fourth anniversary soon. But, um, or maybe I'm got wrong about that, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Mark and Jim are here to talk about fall head races, and these are the longer races that happen after you've trained up on your erg, you've done your sprints, you've done all the prep that you need to do, and these are the longer ones, right? Mm-hmm. Great. Um, and there's a lot of them all over the United States. We're going to be talking about a few of them, and then we'll put the full list up on our show notes at readyrowusa.com. Um, I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors and underwriters. Uh, Good Inklings does my website for Ready Row USA, and this is just been a fantastic experience working with Good Inklings. Um, the there she, there's her slide, but she does uh, she'll do a website edit uh, audit for any of our listeners or viewers, um, and we also have uh, Burnham Boat Slings has been a sponsor for quite a while now, and they are have the ubiquitous uh, boat covers and and accessory uh, items for to keep your boat pristine and lovely. You guys know, you guys know the, uh, Peter Kerman. We know Peter Kerman Linda very Mary well. Yep. and all those people mm -hmm. up there. Yep. Um, back to uh, the sponsors, Resolute and Sykes are also sponsoring us this year. Thanks so much uh, for, to them. And uh, I, I now have a Sykes um, single. I, it still knows more about rowing than I do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm like it. Liking it very much. Um, so we'll go on into our, our discussion of the fall head races. Uh, if you can uh, connect with us on social media, you can use the hashtag ReadyRowUSA, and we'll follow you and give you um, gadgets, gear, and rowing services. Um, so guys, what exactly is a head race? Well, head racing had been around Europe for years and years and years and years. And in the United States, our rowing was extremely boring. All it was was your, your typical college sprints race, and then there would be the occasional longer race, which would be Harvard-Yale, where they'd go two, three, and four miles. Right? Just Harvard and Yale. Just Harvard and Yale. Nobody, well, no, the IRAs also, at, at the beginning, were three- and four-mile races. IRAs, All right. the intra Intercollegiate Rowing, Rowing Association. Rowing. That is, is mostly the men's program. Right. Head racing didn't take off in the United States until about 1964-65, when Ernie Arlett, an Englishman from Henley-on-Thames, was hired to become the first rowing coach at Northeastern University. And Ernie got in, in uh, contact with, uh, with the people at the Cambridge Bow Club, Darcy McMahon and others, and said, rowing's so boring here in America, why don't you have head races? And the very first head race in the United States was the head of the Charles back in, in oh. 1965. Uh, five years later, the head of the Schuylkill followed suit, uh -huh. and then soon after, the entire country took over yeah. with head races. So any river or lake in the yeah. country longer than 5,000 meters is sponsoring a head race. What makes a head race exciting? A course like the head of the Charles in Boston, where you have to maneuver through seven bridges, extremely windy, all right? Uh, we were just talking to Jeff, your technician in there, about NASCAR a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, hats off to you. Uh, What's exciting about NASCAR, to a good extent, are the crashes. Yeah. All right? And in That's head right. racing, you're seeing crashes, yeah. people crashing into bridges, people crashing into everybody else. So there's a lot of skill involved. Mm -hmm. Left out one important part. Everybody doesn't start at the same time in a head race. A head race, each boat starts about every 10 to 15 seconds apart, and you're racing over time 
to the finish line. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you've won until after they have tabulated all the times to find out what's right. going on. Faster people normally start at the at the beginning, mm -hmm. slower people at the end. But a fast person starting at the end of the queue can also win the race. Yeah. All right. And it also helps to have someone coming up on you because it you're pushing it sends you up the river. <laughs> yeah. That that Charlie kind of is what gets the best out of yeah. the best scholars. The guys on top yeah. that really want to win, they're always worrying about that other scholar that's out of sight. Yeah. All right, and they're always working as hard as they can to maximize their boat speed, trying to get mm -hmm. through to the finish. You know, so yeah. it really has made rowing exciting. The most exciting that I've seen it was last year's Head of the Charles. After two years of COVID, the Charles finally returned. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sunny day, quarter of a million people on Saturday and Sunday oh, watching those beautiful? races. Yeah. The world got back yeah. to normal, and the racing was fabulous. And I love that they moved the Masters to Friday morning. It's a great I, I idea. Know, people complained yeah. about it, but I, I really like I it. I think it's great. And it gives, you know? gives more uh, exposure to the sport and the city and everything like that. The other that. thing that's nice about, yeah. about the Charles and a lot of the head races is here at the head of the Charles, the high school crews that are coming to compete, right, along with the Masters that are coming mm -hmm. to compete, or watching some of the top athletes in the world. Yeah. You know, and, and most head of the Charles Regattas, there's probably 25 to 50 mm -hmm. countries represented. And the head of the Charles has done a great job bringing in the top scholars in mm -hmm. the world. Uh, the, the Zeno Mullers, and in, in the past days, the uh, uh, Mahia Drysdales, Senac, mm -hmm. Tufta, you know. And can you get... You can go on the registration and just find out who's actually racing, right? Right, yeah. In Regatta Central. Right, so through Regatta Central, and you can, you can find see. out their, their history. That's or right. Their, yeah. We had masters at our camp here today yeah. going, this person I raced against yeah. two years ago. This was their time two years ago. This is their, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all of that, that comes through. But this stuff is great in that the younger people in the country can aspire to be like those international yeah. athletes. Uh, this year's regatta, I think, is actually teaming up with the Philadelphia Gold Cup, which mm -hmm. was one of the first professional-type mm -hmm. races that we had here in the United States back in the 1950s, where Ivanov from Russia would come in to race against so Don Sparrow cool. from yeah. New York Athletic Club yeah. in the United States and others. You know, So that, that's exciting, having that coming. And now you guys have, like you, you alluded to, the, this camp that you have, what is beneficial about that in terms of like this head race in particular, the head of the Charles and others? Would you would you have camps for others, Mark? You want to take that one? Yeah, yeah, jump in there. We could we could certainly have camps for other locations. An right. interesting thing, as Jim already mentioned, is that this is such a unique course. I think the other thing is yeah. that there are so many people racing and wanting to race at the head of the Charles. So. Uh, one of the gentlemen that's in our camp this year is starting 125th out of 127 scholars. So he's brand new to the head of the Charles, hasn't raced here before, so he's pushed into the back a little bit. But he's not going to finish 125th. He's quite a good sculler. Yeah. And so learning the ins and outs of warm-up, learning mm -hmm. ins and outs of the rules, learning ins and outs of how to proceed down to the starting line, and, and then compete in a competitive way is what people really like about the Head of the Charles. The Head of the Charles is the premier race in the country as far as head racing goes. But possibly are, the world. Possible, yeah. well, probably well, the people world. people come from all over the That's world. That's right. I know, I saw the Dutch team, right. mm -hmm. I saw Chinese, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But there are other races all around the country right. that are also a lot of fun, but none are as big as this one. So yeah. that's, the, that's the thing, that's the big draw for the Head right. of the Charles, of course. Yeah. yeah. And there's, so there's some others, I just kind of wanted to kind of give people a sense of what's out there. I mean, there's 55, probably more. Sure. Um, but some of them are more well-known than others. Right. Um, the Cuyahoga, you guys have been there. Yep. And mm -hmm. The head of the Hudson, been there. That's, that's up by West Point. Uh-huh. Uh yeah. I've raced at the head of the Des Moines, took uh, Indiana University there a bunch of years ago. So. Lived in Dallas. Never did the Steerhead. That'll be interesting. That's a great name for a it is, regatta. Isn't it? There are a lot of especially in Fort Worth, oh, right? The, the head of the fish is my favorite. Sure, thing. there's like, a lot of the, neat, you actually neat get names. fish heads. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
we, I created a head race back in Bloomington, Indiana called the Lemonhead, and we actually <laughs> were sponsored by Ferrara Pan Candies, who make the Lemonhead the Candies. The Lemonhead Candies. And every participant got a free box of Lemonheads. Well, and it was yeah. on Lake Lemon, so yeah. it was a great name. I love but it. the names are great. The head of the yeah. dog, and uh, there are, the hog is the head of the Genesee. We were just in Rochester, New York that's last weird. week, and that's another one. So they're all over the country, and I think that's what's exciting is that the, a lot of the regattas become very regional. But oftentimes it's fun as a outside competitor to go to another region to race yeah. against other masters or against other high schools or whatever. Obviously, the head of the Charles encourages people from all over the country to come. Mm -hmm. But you could go and take your team other places and just borrow equipment. It's like yeah. going someplace and so borrowing just, equipment would be fine. You can book a Super 8 or whatever. Right, sure. and, mm -hmm. uh, and Or an Airbnb or whatever. You Airbnb, maybe a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and then you can go to the race or should you call the uh, the boat manufacturers beforehand or? Yeah, no, you just borrow boats from other teams that are yeah. competing there. Yeah. I mean, Local that, clubs get yeah. it, get in touch. You know, we get that a lot from masters that you know come into rowing at a later age. They don't yeah. know how to get to a regatta, and we try to explain to them yeah. how you can go to Regatta Central mm -hmm. and see what regattas are available. You can look at the the level of competition. One of the things that we didn't touch on was uh, getting into a, a race. Some of these regattas, anybody can show up and go right at the head at say. the head of the charles and yeah. some of the other uh regattas you know either you're within five percent of the winner's time for a guaranteed entry for the next year yeah. or your your name goes in a hat and it's a lottery system and you get pulled out it's the luck of the draw and that's where we come along with uh all american rowing because for somebody to show up we've got an 80 year old gentleman with us uh here this week uh, coming in from Petaluma, California, and very competent scholar at 80, but for him to do well at the head of the Charles, he's going to have to know how to row over that course. Yeah. There are some really sharp turns, so it's not a question of who can go fast, mm -hmm. it's who can go fast while orchestrating that course, that course yeah. because it, there are turns on that course, you know, Weeks Bridge and Lars Anderson, yeah. every foot you go in one direction, you might be moving two feet yeah. away from the race course and adding 30 seconds onto your time. I'll never forget that Weeks where everybody goes wide and Mark's yeah. always saying, Turn. Turn. You don't want to go get your, your chowder till after you finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the chowder standard. You know, but, but from a spectator yeah. standpoint yeah. now, uh, we touched on this a little earlier as well, our, our sport is becoming a spectator sport. First in Boston because... The race course is so narrow, mm -hmm. and people can sit on the shore and have a nice lunch while they're watching the races. But you also have drones flying overhead. Yeah. Uh, the technology is stuff that, that real time, somebody can be looking at your phone and, and yelling out to, to their significant other on the race course, yeah. you know, you were five seconds behind the leader when you went by Riverside Boat Club. And that's all legal. And it's all legal. It's not like tennis where you're... No, no, no. That, that's, that's all legal. So, yeah. it, it, again, it adds to the excitement of yeah, what's going yeah. on. And, oh, it's great. you know, it, these head races are more akin to a festival. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like the Boston Marathon. How many people are going to win? But it's Probably. being there, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's important. And being around that community of outdoor people that want to be outside, yeah. you know, enjoying the, the, the clean water yeah, and the clean was, air. And you know, it's talking to the guys that founded that, or they revived that uh, club in Waco, Texas. Uh -huh. And they're, yeah. start, they're doing a head race down there yep, yep. on the Braza, Brazos uh -huh. River. Brazos. Yeah. I'm yeah, looking. And, I'm looking past you at some of the names. The Green Mountain Head. Yeah. What you gotta love about the Green Mountain Head is that's a stake race. So basically, you oh, go I out. Love stake races. You go out 2.5 kilometers. Yeah. You turn around a stake, and then you have to come back. Which what, is no easy task what in a sculling get, what, <laughs> Right. What do you get a, as as the winners yeah. in a stake race at the Green Mountain Head? You get maple, maple syrup, syrup and, and pumpkins. Yeah. You know how and, cool is that? In in Springfield, they have a stake race. And you get steak, uh huh, and pie, yeah. and then something else for bronze. You know, but mm -hmm. steak and pie. You know, that's, yeah, that's, that's something cool. to aim for. Yeah. But so. all of this has grown out since uh, Boston first started in '65. You know, mm -hmm. so we've come a long way, and our sport has grown exponentially in mm -hmm. those past 50 years. Yeah. And that's why, 
you'll have 10,000 competitors in Boston. You'll probably have eight to 10,000 competitors at the head of the Schuylkill and, and some of the other regattas, you know? And uh, it, it's for everybody, the juniors, the high schools, the colleges, the masters. Yeah, this is the uh, head of the Ohio, which is not in Ohio, right? Right. Have you been to this one? No. Yeah, yeah. I've been to that one numerous yeah. times. Yeah, yeah Pittsburgh. Um, the thing I think that a lot of head races do, uh, and maybe to make yourselves more interesting as a, as a race or an event to go to, is what we were just talking about, and, and making it a little more unique. Oftentimes, uh, mm -hmm. a head race is just the 5K. And... I think nowadays people are looking for a little more bang for their buck for the travel and and uh, expense yeah. of traveling to a location mm -hmm. or a competition, is is making those other races. Uh, Oklahoma City was really the first place to create those sprints that go along with the head race. So and they had the the night sprints. They so had, is that a multi-day? No, is this later in the day? Two day. Oh. It was a, it oh. was a two-day two race, just like yeah. a lot of races but, are. But, but Saturday but, night is is the night race, is followed by yeah. fireworks, which is quite cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there's lots of other ways to make yourself distinct and, and uh, unique as far as an event goes. And I think that's what one of the things that I would recommend to organizers and LOCs mm -hmm. is to be trying to make yourself a little more interesting to go to. Don't just make it a 5K around yeah. the lake. Um, and so there's lots of ways to do that. Increase, uh, in, introduce the corporate, uh, kind of a corporate event potentially, um, add uh, a sprint so like the race. So director's cups and stuff? That well, they no, I was thinking more like your actual corporate learn to row. So a lot of clubs okay, are, yeah. a mm -hmm. lot of clubs around the country, you know, are, are offering learn to row opportunities or experiences for yeah. corporations and businesses. Well, what a great way to get those people to be involved in your event is have them be volunteering in the morning and then mm -hmm. have a corporate learn to row race that maybe oh, yeah. not 5K, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. it's only 500 meters, Pretty maybe similar. something shorter that then highlights their um, experience and their involvement in the regatta. So and then your sponsors are actually racing and competing and so on. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, the thing that I would always like to suggest is have your, in, are you an interesting race or are you just another race? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of races that, that the volunteer base from your club or your community puts an awful lot of work into every regatta, every race, but the the bang for the buck, the return on investment might be relatively low. You know, obviously mm -hmm. the head of the Charles brings in millions of dollars to the community of Boston and the surrounding area, but it's a full time job for many, for several people all year, all yeah. year long. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these races are all put on by volunteers. But there's a goal. They're either trying to highlight and encourage rowing in their community, or they're trying to make some funds, you know, generate revenue mm -hmm. for their program or their area, or you know, some other reason. But I think a lot of times there has to be that goal for the race to have. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we've been at the Secret City Head Race. We've yeah, been at Head of the Charles. I love that name, been Secret the, City. With, oh. Yeah, the Head of the Colorado. That's a great one down in Austin. You know, there's a Music City Head Race. You know, that's run by the Nashville Rowing Club and right. Vanderbilt University. You know, that's a great little spot. They're racing out of the... Uh, uh, Tennessee Titans parking lot. They're rowing on the Tennessee River down um, right through downtown Nashville. You could be sitting at a bar on uh, on Music Row, basically, Good place to be. and yeah. look down <laughs> onto the river yeah, and watch down. the boats go by. It's pretty. It's really cool, you know, and it's and it's fun. And they're they're a location that's getting a lot of. Um, how, how competition long have they been from a going lot. On? This is about third or fourth year. They cancel. I had to cancel one, but yeah. third or fourth year. So, so it's you feel all, like all, all these, um, the ones that you know about anyway, are starting to. Are they coming back full force from? Pandemic? Yeah, I think everybody is really doing their best to come back after the whole yeah. COVID business. Yeah, for what, sure. Mar what Mark touched on, and it, it's outdoors. It, so. <laughs> what Mark yeah. touched on, I know, is affecting a lot of. Uh, you know, running races, you know, yeah, uh -huh. the volunteer base that comes back year after year was lost through COVID. Yeah. And now yeah. you have to rebuild that volunteer base. And, you know, our, 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 our regatta. Permanently, but right. lost just because they yeah. go off and do other things. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you got to bring all these people back. And yeah. these regattas wouldn't work if it wasn't for the yeah. volunteers. They put a lot of time into setting up the courses and make sure the timing's mm -hmm. right. And. Yeah, I've raced the head of the Charles twice, and I don't know if I'm going to do it again, but maybe. And uh, maybe when I'm 70, I'll, there won't be anyone else. 
There's plenty in the 70-year-old category. Just, Trust just, me, I'm there. Like, it's a packed field. My friend Ruth Berenson is like, she's going to yeah. win someday, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, but um, You just keep racing. Eventually, you yeah. will be the oldest person. Yeah. You yeah. Will right. win. <laughs> I love it. That's yeah. the goal, to yeah, be the yeah. oldest person. So you guys do camps. I mean, it's all-American rowing camp. You guys are the co-founders. And Jim, you are... Jim Dietz, you are a um, Olympic rower and coach. Three, three different, six different Olympics. Six different Olympics. As, as rower yeah. and coach. And then, uh, Mark, um, you have been coaching at Indiana, Coast Guard Academy, no, Northeastern. No, started, started coaching at UMass with UMass Jim. With I was his oh, assistant. Okay. oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then went on and yeah. uh, went to Indiana, founded yeah. the women's program at Indiana. So you've both done sweeps, which is single oar, and sure. sculling, yeah. sculling yeah. which is a double oar. Mm -hmm. And But you... Do you have a preference? Friends don't let friends row sweep. <laughs> uh, sculling is is, is I much haven't made the t-shirt yet, but we're about <laughs> yeah. to. We, we you know, need that uh, one. Sculling is, is so yeah. much better. And, you know, that was one thing that, that was uh, a benefit to COVID. More people got into sculling, sculling. boats because, I know because the, of that. Yeah, the uh, high school team that I'm on the board of, mm -hmm. you know, they they had, they got about 10 Right. Boats yeah, and and, and kids are going to learn a lot more in in those sculling boats mm -hmm. and 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 uh, and do well. But yeah, Mark and I, uh, we've been doing this for what? 22, 23 years now. Twenty three years now, all over the United States, yeah. all over Europe. Uh, I'll be going with Mark to Croatia yeah. in September, oh, that's awesome. rowing on the Adriatic, and uh, you know, so Mark's been in Portugal so far this year, and. We're Led, led Netherlands, yeah. You know, so rowing is all over the world, and the rowing family all over the world is a family. Yeah. You walk into any boathouse in the world, and they're going to welcome you and give you a boat to I row. I went to the Portugal trip, and which was wonderful. But uh, before we went to rowing, we went down to the to the river, you know, that big harbor there mm -hmm. in Lisbon, and walked up to a rowing club, and they said, you know, they said, come come back when you're, you know, before you go home and row yeah. with us. Yeah. It's just. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, these are people that, I mean, they, they spoke English pretty well. But, it's a nice you know, community. It's, yeah, so anyway, so that's um, the head of the Charles. I, one, yeah, the other thing on the head races I'd just like to bring up is that yeah. the head race season doesn't just mean 5K. You know, we talked about the uh, idea of adding a sprint race to it, but you can, there are other events. There are marathons and half marathons and, and other distances going on as well. So that's another way to distinguish yourself as an event. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to run a 5K uh, for everybody, high school, masters, uh, collegiates on Saturday, you could then come along on the next day and run a longer you know, 15K or half marathon cool. race, which is, yeah. you know, 21K or a full marathon on sun on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it and it's really not that hard to put together. It could be an out and back. It could be a one way. It could be a, a loop kind of thing where you're mm -hmm. doing basically stages and you're looping around a course. So there's lots of different ways to make your events more interesting. Yeah, yeah. great. So. Good advice. Yeah. Have you have either of you been to the head of the South? That's a sure. pretty famous yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When is that's uh, November? Yeah, so those yeah. are later in the season. The other race close by here that I really enjoy, I, I did it just last month, is the uh, Blackburn Challenge, oh, which I is knew the. You were going to get coastal it, rowing. It, in it, here. It's it's the twenty plus miles yeah. around Cape Ann and Gloucester, and so it's you, it's mostly ocean. But again, what's nice about it is you have every type of boat class there, from a fixed seat whale boat type of thing with a mm -hmm. crew of. 12 or so to a person on a stand-up paddleboard to these surf skis and and uh, like a marathon you finish you pull your boats into a beach there's a giant tent the tent is loaded with beer barbecue <laughs> and a band it's like what's not to like about that but but there are you all these people you're doing that next all time, these so. people from all these different yeah. disciplines all share one thing in common, the love of being outdoors and mm -hmm. staying fit and doing stuff. And, uh, and are you, you sit down and talk to the most interesting people. Are you in sight of the shore at all times? Oh, yeah, you're yeah. in sight of the shore. Yeah. If, if you get too far out, you've, you're off course. Yeah. Okay. But that would be, a, <laughs> a, a, well, that would be another way to um, make your, your event more interesting. You know, yeah. Have a stand-up paddleboard or a paddling event part of your head race. You know? yeah. The canoe and kayak guys love it. We saw three uh, OC1 paddlers out on the Charles yesterday. yesterday yeah. What's right? OC1? 
ocean uh, ocean canoe single single okay, ocean yeah, canoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an outrigger okay. outrigger canoe. Yeah. But um, and then the paddleboard people they love to have events. They're just like us. They want to have uh, a chance to show off how fast they are. So yeah. don't don't be afraid to encourage other um, competitive watercraft onto your onto your event. I think that's mm -hmm. be a really smart thing to do and then you're going to increase your visibility to other people and that's really what rowing needs to continue to do mm -hmm. is to increase visibility it yeah. seems like some of the clubs that i've i've do club spotlights on on the show and you know it seems like a lot of them are doing that you know where they're bringing in different kinds of water sports mm -hmm. and different you know, at, so there's not just a rowing club. It's, right. It's and more a, of a water sports center. Yeah, yeah. N the concept uh, of a water sports center is really good. It's human powered water sport. Yeah. That's much more inviting to a sponsor, yeah. to a donor, to a community, Very good point. to the city, mm -hmm. uh, to the everything, to have more different people getting in a boat. That's, yeah, why, like that's what Oklahoma's done, and right, that's why sure. they're so successful. Went out up there. to the North Shore Maritime Center, which is a new one up in Lynn, Mass. It's like this little kind of lakeish area, and they have all sorts of water sports. And mm -hmm. the kids, you know, they might be out in a kayak, but they see the rowers, and then they want to try that. Sure. You right. know, so it's, that's a yeah. cool part about it. I think that's great. Yeah. Kids moving back and forth in sports and yeah. doing a lot of different stuff. Any other, uh, any of these that we should touch on? Hooch is a great one. Hooch is is it's great. Classic. Hooch is a big. Yeah. Hooch is a big race. Yep, yeah, that's another big one. And then the head of the lake out in Seattle. That's a that's gonna be a fun one. That can get a little chilly and a little windy. I've been there when yeah, it feels I've feels like winter and it's like oof, white Ooh. caps and frost and like everything else. Raw but wind. Yeah, but yeah. you get everything. It's nice. But it's an outside. You know, sometimes it's, nice. yeah. it's an outside sport, yeah. so you got to be ready, and you know, you decide whether or not you're yeah. going to go row or not. So. Yeah, and if um, if you want to look at all these, uh, the list of available races is on regattacentral.com, and just just type in the search bar um, head or the date that you want, or the city that you, or the state that you want to. Go to. You know, so. if you're not a rower, go to these events yeah. just to watch and you'll become a fan. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you, you see the organization uh, of the volunteer. regatta. Become, you, a, become, uh, a, become a volunteer. Yeah. Right. They you always will take a volunteer at mm -hmm. any, any location. So. You know, anybody yeah. that can drive a motorboat is usually welcomed at any of these places Absolutely. because they need drivers. Well, they need uh, refs, too. Like, that's yeah. training. but um, mm -hmm. And coaches. I know coaches mm -hmm. and, and referees are, are in yeah. short supply. But, um, well, thanks, you guys, for, for telling us a little bit more about the about the uh, head races and you know every year I learn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to um, put in a plug for some of the the uh, episodes we have coming up. Um, we're we're doing our uh, fourth year anniversary again so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah so this is our fourth year. Yeah so we're completing mm -hmm. our fourth year. So we're, we're going to be doing a celebration and I'm going to hope that you guys will come and, and do that again. Mm -hmm. um, we have a series that we put together. Um, we have some episodes coming up that are, uh, we have next month the uh, Rowing to Recovery. It's an interview with uh, Kirsten Klein, who's the world champion uh, indoor rower. And she's also going to be talking about her Road to Recovery from Alcohol Addiction, and she's very forthright about that and the role of rowing in, in um, making her recovery meaningful. Um, and let us know what's going on at your club. We have at Ready Row USA, we have a form where you can fill out, and if I, I keep monitoring it, and if you um, post your events, I'll uh, put them on the show, and we'll give it some some legs. If you if you need a if you have a um, if you're hiring somebody, or if you have a new hire, you want to feature somebody, that's also legitimate. Uh, just fill out the form, and we'll we'll get it on the show. Um, we also want to do another gadgets and gear series. So we do that usually every year, hopefully before the holidays, but. Uh, Send us your favorite gadget, uh, rowing gadget, and we will uh, put it on our show. Um, we have some books coming out. Pierce Press is my company, and we 
have a new book called Oceans Alive, which relates to coastal rowing, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keeping the ocean clean. This kid uh, saves the ocean. Um, and a, a couple other books at piercepress.com. And thanks again to our, our, um, our sponsors for, for helping us make this show and do what we love. So thank you guys. All right. Um, Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks for having us here, Charlotte. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. We'll see you soon. All right. And we just kind of... Uh